So what's it called? It's called a camera, is it? Yeah, it's a, it's a camera. Right, camera. Is camera. That, so that's what camera. Yeah, camera. camera. Hello, welcome to Brandon Recommends. Today I'm going to be carrying on my David Finchy, Finchy, Finchy. I've covered a few Finchy films in the last few months and I want to get back to the one that really, really brought me into his style, which was obviously Seven. Um, was it better than Six? Um, seven, starring Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman, <coughs> Kevin Spacey. Unfortunately, that, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he's the one thing that's kind of in retrospect, uh, kind of diminished the film's credibility, um, which sucks because he did some good stuff in the 90s and whatnot in his career, but... Hey. Now, Seven is um, one of those serial killer films that is just so iconic. It was just that 90s period where they had some really good sort of serial killer stuff coming out. And I think it was a sleeper hit. I don't think it performed too well in the cinema. I think it was one of those video... Um, wonders where it just went nuts on video. You know, the credits, you know, you got Howard Shaw doing the music for this. I'm going to talk about the composer first, Howard Shaw, because I'm a big fan. He did Lord of the Rings, Science of the Lambs, and it's just amazing how a composer can still have recognizable elements in his music, but still can sound so, you know, uniquely. What's the word? And the flavor, the, the themes, the, the sounds that he utilizes just fits that material so well. This guy has a great palette of sound that he uses for his films. Like you listen to Lord of the Rings, I mean, and then you can you know compare that or contrast that to something like Science of the Lambs or Seven. The sounds that he utilizes just fits that material so well. And anyway, getting back to the starting credits, he had Nine Inch Nails. Because David Finch actually filmed closer the video, uh, the music video for Trent Reznor for Nine Inch Nails, and a lot of that feel is actually carried through into this film. I'm not quite sure on the on, on the time frame of which. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not too sure on the time frame. David Finch and Trent Reznor have obviously forged a wonderful relationship, working relationship over the years. Brad Pitt, great role for him. You know, he was up and coming at this stage still, and it's a great kind of supporting role to Morgan Freeman, who plays a great lead in this. Uh, and then obviously Morgan Freeman went on to do a, bit, a few more crime films, like Kiss the Girls and Along Came a Spider, and that, that just got worse. Um, but yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow actually shows up and does another little moment in this film. She plays Brad Pitt's wife, which is funny to see her playing such a small role. It's got one of those all-time classic endings in this film. I'm not going to give it away, just in case you haven't seen it. Um, but everything about this film is just glorious. Like, it's raining constantly. The city is not named. It's, a not, it's an unnamed place, the location that they're and that it's set in. And I think they did, well, I don't think, they did that on purpose because they didn't want to kind of restrict it to like New York or you know Los Angeles or whatever wherever it was they kind of wanted this made up sort of fantastical place it kind of ties in with the whole seven deadly sins thing it could be hell it could be you know it could be another place you know it doesn't have to be restricted to a time and place it is just what it is and I love that as well like it doesn't go into unnecessary details it kind of you know, and it plays its cards really close to the chest as well through the film. And it's got some great reveals along the way. It's got brilliant use of um, visceral moments in the way that Fincher will frame the nasty, gory, gruesome deaths. Like, there's no, there's no real kills or deaths on screen. It's all happens off screen. You see the aftermath of what the serial killer is capable of and what he's doing. And... You don't actually see him going around killing people. You don't see the process. You see it after the fact. And I think that's the most important part about this film is that it's, you don't really see much action, you know? It's all story, it's all story and character. It's very heavy on that development. The Morgan Freeman character and the Brad Pitt character, the new rookie or the new cop from the country coming in, partnering with an old veteran who's just about to kind of retire and he's got this one last case. And just the way they kind of forge their relationship through this film, you know, to the end is, it's stunning. It is literally one of those stunning films. And Morgan Freeman was, you know, he, he was on a good run, you know. He did Shawshank Redemption, you know, he had Seven under his belt here and many more as well, Driving Miss Daisy before all that. Seven, it's a great film. I love it. If you can't already tell, I f***ing love it. So, 
It's one of those ones I used to put on every year. It's actually one of the first DVDs I ever bought. And it was like 40 bucks for like a DVD yeah. from the video store. <laughs> it's a film that will always be around for me. I, watch, I used to watch it just to feel good. It's one of those weird feel good, feel bad movies because it's shot so well. It's a beautifully made film. Love all the aspects of it, the sound design and everything. The cinematography. But you know, it's, it's great. It's all good shit. Anyway, Finchy, 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 Finchy. Thanks for watching. Brandon highly recommends. I'll see you next time. Adios. Sloth, wrath, pride, lust, and envy. Seven. You can expect five more of these. Have you ever seen anything like this? No. Seven. Thanks for watching Mini Academy Online. If you'd like to explore more of our content, click on this or click on that. Like and subscribe, thumbs up, ring bells, do a dance, sing a song, drink a hot cup of tea or coffee, and I'll see you in the next one.